The House Select Committee investigating January 6th moving swiftly to address a draft order from December 2020 that would have directed the Pentagon to seize voting machines. Uh, Chairman of the January 6th Committee, Benny Thompson, today said uh, that they've spoken to defense officials as well as one-time key Trump ally, former Attorney General Bill Barr. To be honest with you, we've had conversations with the former Attorney General already. Uh, we've talked to Department of Defense individuals. Uh, we are concerned uh, that our military uh, was part of this big lie on promoting uh, that the election was false. So if you are using the military uh, to potentially seize uh, voting machines, even though it's a discussion, uh, the public needs to know. And Barr stepped down in the same month that this draft order was apparently put together after he broke ranks. Uh, by rejecting Trump's election conspiracy theories and lies. Uh, let's discuss with CNN political analyst Carl Bernstein. His uh, great new memoir is called Chasing History, A Kid in the Newsroom. Uh, Carl, I'm already diving into it, loving it so far. Uh, appreciate you, you coming on. I uh, want to talk about that in a quick moment, but first I want to ask you about Bill Barr uh, cooperating with this committee. Um, that, is, that is a fascinating development, is it not? Well, yes, and we've got to know, you know, the extent of the cooperation, but he was in a position to know an awful lot about what Donald Trump was doing to stage a coup. And one of the things we need to say about this investigation is already we know how serious an investigation it is. We know that it's turned up a tremendous amount of uh, information that not only suggests that Donald Trump was intent on staging a coup, it's pretty definitive at this point. We also know that members of the vice president of Pence's staff are cooperating with the president. Question is about members of his family. But a picture from what we already know is starting to emerge of a criminal, seditious president of the United States, unprecedented in our history in this country. You have to go back to the Civil War to find the kind of sedition occurring at a high level in our government, such as occurred on January 6th and, and right after the election. And think back to the sedition of the Confederacy. That was led by a member of the Congress, not by a president of the United States. And the fact that the Republican Party has not participated in this investigation, has just decided they will throw in their lot with Donald Trump and his criminality, tells us an awful lot about where this Republican Party is today and how Trump has them under his lock and key. And, Carl, you know, I, I do want to talk about your book uh, because, you know, there, there are a lot of um, lessons in there that I think would be instructive today. It's, uh, it's in its first week already on the uh, top ten of the New York Times bestseller list. Uh, congratulations on that. It's an incredible look at your uh, career pre-Watergate. Um, at one point, you detail, uh, offer details of being on the dictation desk, uh, which a lot of younger viewers uh, might not be so familiar with. Uh, you were on the dictation desk as news of the Kennedy assassination uh, came in, and you write this, uh, my hands were shaking. This is as you were taking in dictation uh, from a reporter uh, covering the Kennedy assassination, and I mistyped uh, hospital without having the time to correct it. The White House deputy press secretary announced officially that the president had died at 1 o'clock central time. Kennedy had been given the last rites by one of the priests. A few seconds later, the wire room bells uh, went haywire with the report a flash that the president really was dead. Um, what do you remember about that day? And, and what is it about those newsrooms of that era uh, that we should be learning from at this point in our history? Well, let me first say something about this book, Chasing History, A Kid in the Newsroom, because it's really about this kid, me, who got the best seat in the country at age 16. I went to work as a copy boy at the Washington Evening Star, the greatest afternoon paper in America at the time, the opposition paper, and a better paper than the Washington Post in those days. And what this memoir is about is this five years from 1960 to 65, when huge events are happening in the nation, not just the inauguration and uh, the election of Kennedy, his assassination, which I'll talk about in a second, the civil rights movement, the passage of the Voting Rights Act, I was able to cover uh, as a 19-year-old kid. And think of what's happening right now in the Congress of the United States to strip away the Republican Party wants to strip away the Voting Rights Act that was passed in 1965. 
So it's about this kid that gets the best seat in the country, gets to see these presidents firsthand, and write and report on all the great events in the country, really in my teenage years, and before Man. Watergate, before the Washington Post, and there's not a word in this after 1965. It's not the old man looking back. It's written in the voice of the kid. And on the date of the assassination, I came down to the newsroom. I heard the news while I was in a class at the University of Maryland. And a reporter was running out the door, and she said to me, he's dead. And hmm. it had not been announced yet that he was dead. And I said, how do you know? And she said, well, Jerry O'Leary's brother, who works at the CIA, and O'Leary was a great rewrite man at the Star, got it from his brother. I ran upstairs to, to the newsroom. The national editor, because I, he knew I could type pretty much faster than anybody at 90 words a minute, said, Bernstein, put on your headset. And he said, take David Broder from Dallas, Broder being the top political reporter at the paper. Right. And I put on my headset, and he started to dictate, and he said, two priests walked out of Dallas Memorial Parkland Hospital at 1.10 p.m. today and announced, comma, quote, the president is dead. I misspelled hospital, as you indicated, because my hands were shaking so bad. But right after that, I was told by the city editor to right away to go up to the, to the Capitol to try and find Speaker McCormick, who was the Speaker of the House and the next in line after the Vice President, Lyndon Johnson, who had been sworn in as president or was being sworn in, and to find Speaker McCormick. Well, I was told he was hiding under his desk. I finally found him surrounded by a phalanx of Capitol Hill police from there. I was sent to the White House to wait for the body to come back, to mm. cover the people in Lafayette Square across the street who were sobbing. Crowds were gathering. I covered the assassination through the weekend. It's just an example, though, of, of what these wonderful people at this great newspaper let me do, even though when I went to work there, I had one foot in the pool hall, one foot in the juvenile court and about two inches of a foot in the classroom. So it's about this kid who gets this amazing seat and what he learns, which is everything that Woodward and I did in Watergate. You can see how in All the President's Men we talk about the best obtainable version of the truth. It wow. comes from what I learned at the Star. And so the lines are clear. It's about what a reporter does perseverance knock on doors learn to make sources how you deal with those sources and so it's a book about another time in america another time in journalism and yet those basic techniques are the reason we have seen in the trump presidency the greatest reporting on a presidency in my lifetime by the greatest number of news organizations because that methodology what we know about the Trump presidency, we know from the reporting, not from the government. And it's so critically important. And, and Carl, we're so fortunate that you, you stayed out of that pool hall and you stayed in the newsroom and, and learned the cra craft and learned the trade because uh, we are all the better for it. Carl Bernstein, uh, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Uh, check out his great new book, uh, Chasing History, A Kid in the Newsroom. It's out now. Uh, Carl, we'll have you back soon and, and we'll wax poetic even more. Thanks so much for your time.